Now, in a birthday speech given by President Muhammad Buhari, the president asked politicians interested in contesting the 2023 general elections and those who may be planning to use their offices or security agencies to subvert the will of the people to have a rethink because he would not allow electoral malpractices. Interesting. Well, joining us once again is Tunji Abdul Amid and, of course, Babashala Adebuyi. I'm going to start with you, Tunji. You are a student of law. You are a lawyer. You I'm obviously okay. have gone to court over and over and over after every election cycle for uh, allegations of electoral malpractice or violence. I'm sure that the list is endless. Is this a call that Mr. President is making for real? Or is this uh, another political statement? What do you think? Uh, I see it as a political statement. Why? Uh, because uh, if you want to, if Mr. President is keen in ensuring fair, free and fair election, it's not about talking. There are things that have to be done. But we you have can read a riot act we have, if you we have, want we to have, do we something. Have, it's, 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 not by, it's not by reading a riot act. It's by, it's by taking action. We have the, the electoral amendment uh, B that has not been done, that has not been passed. They should have to, they, somebody should send that bid back to the National Assembly for, for, for them to, to do it again, to, to solve most of this issue of uh, practice. If we, if we introduce electronic uh, voting or whatever, they, you, that, that will reduce a lot. I, I don't know what Mr. President is talking about, saying that uh, he will not allow fear, free and fair. Does it mean Mr. President is in the last election allowed for free, uh, allowed for, what's it called, uh, uh, on, free, on, on, on free and unfair election? Is there any word like that? You, you know, so I, I, I think, uh, I see it as a political statement. I want to see action. I don't want to see uh, uh, talk, 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 talk. So let, let's take steps. Let's see that oh, Mr. President is doing this in line uh, for, to improve the electoral uh, 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 bill or whatever, Act. uh, acts, and to provide, uh, to, to make provisions for electorals and materials that will cure uh, my practices. The issue of our security agencies, there's no way you can do that. They will always, they will always compromise. But, does, but, 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 but there, there are people who are of the school of thought that no matter how you try to protect the Nigerian electoral system, we always find a way to subvert it. That's a negative way of looking at Nigerians, but could, is there any eye to have truth to it? There, there is. I believe. I believe. When, so when, when another question would be worth When you are essence. developing how to move forward, people are sitting down somewhere talking about how do we block this thing to that. Because when, when I, I, I had, there was a time when Amode was in government, there's a, if you know Togate very well, that, uh, uh, there's this uh, uh, where they normally drop a uh, uh, dirty. Okay. They call it a one year. I can't oh, remember the place uh, again. Uh, uh, you know, somebody stopped them from doing that and the place was not smelling again. Everything was okay. Some people who are strong uh, members of the whatever, in fact, I don't want to mention any name. They are very, very strong, very, very strong. They say, how, how will it block with the, the smell that's making us make money? It's what is now blocking. <laughs> you, you get that point? That what is giving us money is what he's trying to, 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 to clear. I'm now, not... now the place is back to the way it was before Ambode came into, into office, and uh, it's still spelling again. Whenever you pass through the place, you are, you, 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 you I'm are not going to probe that because I don't <laughs> want to derail this conversation, but Babashala, the president, and I want to quote him, says that he will not allow, emphasis, not allow anyone who is running for office to ride on the back of his office to get a position. He said he would also use security agencies to make sure that there is free, fair, and credible elections. My question, what have security agencies been doing the whole time? Uh, and to ask his question too, have we not been having free, fair, credible elections, even the one that happened earlier this year? Please fill me in. Well, the president has the freedom of expression. As we it, all do. It, as we all know. So the president can say whatever he feels that it should say. And if you look at, the, if, if you read that news very well, you understand that a lot of people actually visited him when he actually said that. No. So if the president is now saying that, it means that it could be two things. It means that, oh, after traveling, to the, after traveling out of the country about 10 times after the election, maybe everywhere I've been to, and they have been bombarded with this same question. You guys, I'm not ready for any rubbish in 2023 again. And like you said, it could be a political statement telling people, well, 
um, the election has come and gone. So I know most of you are interested to take over my job. But you know what? I'm not going to support any of you. Whatever you want to do, go and do it. I'm not going to use the security men to... Uh, I'm not going to influence the security men to support you. Have you been influencing the security men, Mr. President? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but you are making a statement is, more like you know thing, where he's coming from. An, so another thing we need to understand is this. Act, is there some truth in the fact that another thing we security need, agencies in the country have been influenced by others from above? There's no doubt about that. During Kogi election is an example. Uh, and we have, been, we have been told, we have been told by, sorry, sorry for okay, that. We have been told by the IG that uh, those who cause uh, mayhem in Kogi State are fake police and the fake police were able to overrun the legal police. And they were able so, to use So if, if, even if the president did not even instruct the so every year is not, not to be to be biased or to, to compromise. The the unofficial police officer can can overrun them, and then it can, it can be. So like I said, what is important is for them to put in place things that will not will not, will not allow for uh, uh, on free and fair and on, on fair election. Please again. <laughs> until until I see the government, until I see the president arresting the IG, arresting the high neck boss, then all those people in charge of election in this country questioning them, taking them to court. Why did that of Kugi and Bayesa happen that way? Eh? Until I said I'm not, in, I'm not going to believe, I'm going to be really be in full support for his statement or believe in his statement. But nevertheless, at those state election and on those state election will be coming up next year. At least what will happen in 2023, maybe by next year we should be able to see a signal of what will happen in 2023. I want to take us so back, gentlemen. election will not be different from what happened. Uh, those election may be like uh, what happened in Kogi State. I want to take us back, gentlemen. Well, the video that's playing right now is showing us the violence that happened. It's just it's just a few weeks ago. It's not so far enough in case... We, we're just trying to, you know, um, remind Mr. President that it just happened a few weeks ago. But let me take us back to Mr. President's very first inaugural speech as a democratic president in this country, the very first in 2015. We all threw around those words. What was it? Let's see if you guys are good students of history. And for nobody and for everybody. Does it not sound similar? So again, should we be holding on to every word that drops from the president's mouth or should we just wait and watch? Yeah, well, if you hold on to it, what will happen? I have stopped holding well, on to Well, that's my question. I have stopped holding on to the word, president's word for over uh, since. Pray tell why. Prince President has said a lot of things that he has, turned out, uh, he has turned back to do another thing that is against what he said. I remember when uh, Yara Dra was uh, sick and was at the point of uh, death, Mr. President, who was not uh, the president at that time, said, How can the president of the country be bedridden outside the country? That you, how, how, will he, how will somebody who is the head of the country? Be taken outside the country for medical attention. My president has been going for uh, medical for several months now. He's not even at the, at the point of death. He is free. He on his own goes decide to go there to do medical. You know, and they, so I have uh, since those those since that those things are happening like that. M Mr. President, one of the Mr. President's uh, daughters just graduated from abroad just a few weeks ago, and I'm very sure if you do your calculation very well, that daughter was not at the university before the Mr. President became a president. Because it, it, this, is a, this is a fifth year. They don't use five years in a, a, to do, to do, to do a, a university degree in abroad. It's three or four years. So I, if you do your calculation very well. So that's another area where I said, where I said look, I will have to screen. I have to screen and wait to see what Mr. President will do before I even believe whatever Mr. President says. Uh, uh, Baba Shala, <laughs> I, I, I have watched other countries run elections and i'm not even going to play that america versus nigeria game because america's democracy is way way better than us but countries such as guinea the littlest of countries embarrass us with free fair incredible elections they have elections like nothing even happened but we the supposed giant of africa or one-time giant of africa is unable to have free fair incredible elections I, I'm trying to understand why is it so difficult for us? Why is it, is it difficult really? Or is it just that we have become more comfortable with the, um, I'm looking for the best of words to describe it, but there is none. The way the 
thuggish way that we conduct our elections? Well, um, it depends on the it depends on the people of the country. So you're saying they were thuggish in nature. Well, in, in, for Am example, the Guinea, is he a thug? the Guinea you made mention of, the people there could be more patriotic. Maybe they are not self-centered as we Nigerians. I'd like to ask you: Are you not patriotic? Well, in my own way, I would are say you, it's a yes or no question. Are you a patriotic Nigerian? I am. So I am, but we have we have to be sincere with ourselves sometimes. Like I made mention earlier, Nigerians, we are selfish. We are self-centered. Everybody is after power. I'm not. Why? Everybody is after power. Everybody is after money. After me. After everybody me, me, is after me, me, co me, me, uh, me, 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 connection, me. influence. Yeah, you are not because you are yet to have someone who is related to you in government. Oh, I have. No, she has been in government. <laughs> she has been in government when she. Yeah, she, she has. has. House of government. The yeah, House of government. I know. I know about that. No, I know about that. She can't deny it. You, you get my point. Mm -hmm. But let's put that aside. Let's look at Guinea that you made mention of now. Is government attractive there? Is it as financially viable as that of Nigeria? Are they money conscious in Guinea? We need to look at those ones. Then, how many political godfathers do we have there, as we have them in Nigeria? Then, the what, is the, what, is the cost, the what is the cost of election in Guinea compared to what we have in Nigeria here now? In Guinea, I don't know if you have to be giving them Ankara or bread before election. In Nigeria, you have to do that to influence your... Uh, the, what's it called? Even your immediate family to influence them. You yes, them you have to do that. Your immediate family. But does that not boil down to our value system? It, all this thing has multiplier effect. Yeah, so I, I'm asking because, you know, we're very quick to, and I'm not in any way trying to give the politicians a break or a day it of... It has devalued I'm us. I'm just asking. Us we as the people... <laughs> We have. All of us, is it not a problem with our value systems from the homes? If we, like you said, if you have to give your brother, your own blood brother, money to support you in elections, if your brother cannot see that you're a man of standard and want to support your vision, then is there not a problem in the home? Yeah, no vision. They don't like, they're not supporting vision. They don't see any vision. Nobody is They interested. only see who gives them a, that, no matter how little, even if it's 1,000 naira. We believe in the last election, I, I, will fully, I was fully involved in the election. My, those few people, some of them that I paid their school fees, they failed to vote for, 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 for me. Then, uh, then uh, some of them even queried the fact that, look, in the last uh, four years ago, you promised to give me 1,000 after voting. You did not give me. I will not vote again this year. For you. Someone called me about two weeks ago, and he said, Shola, you know what? In 2023, I'm not interested on, in who will win the election. Or more, I'm interested in anybody that has money, let me collect my own. <laughs> Everybody sees as a, they see political uh, uh, election in this country as a means of making money. Making money. And a, as a means of uh, enjoying whatever you want so to enjoy at that time. So what happens to the bad roads or the lack of infrastructure, the hospitals that are no longer working where your family member or mine, God forbid, might die because there's nobody to help or there's no gas, uh, there's no, what's oxygen? How come we're not looking at the future, but we are now so parochial in our thinking? Closing statements, gentlemen. Well, in Nigeria of today, most, most politicians or their followers are not interested in the future. Why? 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 Because they why? can't see the future. They can't see. They are myopic in their thinking. They can't think outside the, uh, the box. They are not interested in what will happen in the future. They are only interested in what is happening now. Let me collect my own and let me enjoy myself. At least I can uh, see... It's not that they are more picking their thinking or they don't, they don't want to. Everybody has settled their mind to say, look, the way things are going in this country, I have, I have a doubt and at the as to whether or not what? this thing will, that anything will change. Because once you make money today, no matter, even if you make money from, from us, mm -hmm. we will still be praising you. If I decide to, to be honest, mm -hmm. 
Hmm. And not make money the way you make money. And you try to not to be dishonest and make yes. money. They will they will jettison yes. and they will they will, they will see you as a, as a as a as a good person and they will they will be following you. Well, so everybody wants to be good. It's quite unfortunate that we have deteriorated to this point. It's really sad. But thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Babashala Degui is a political analyst, and of course Tunji Abdul Amid is a lawyer. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been an interesting conversation, but very saddening. Thank you for staying with us. Well, uh, we'll take a short break and bring you our plus reports because President Buhari. Buhari has approved 37 billion naira for the renovation of the National Assembly complex. The amount, which is included in the 2020 budget, is however not part of the 128 billion naira allocated to the National Assembly for next year. Several Nigerians have taken to their social media to voice their opinions. So let's take a look. Here we go again, still debating on whether some governments will be able or will agree to pay the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. And, and Labour has given a final ultimatum that may have the nation at a standstill on New Year's Day. Who really wants that? Well, my question is, why is it, is it so difficult for this money to be paid to all civil servants? Yet, governors have massive paychecks, yes, and pensions for life. Nobody's querying that. Why can't we, the people, be top of our leaders' priority list for once? For once. Why? I thought it was supposed to be service to the people and not service to yourselves. Anyway, now the president seems to be awake to his responsibility, saying he'll ensure that we have free, fair, and credible elections in 2023. Well, all good and great. And he's saying that he will not let anybody write on his name or on the back of his office to get into office, so. But Mr. President, why do you have to wait till 2023? What happened when Kogi had its election some weeks ago? What happened to the elections early this year? Should we take this as another political statement, Mr. President, or should we be taking you seriously? Well, I guess it's your job and I next to convince us. But that's my take, and I'm Mary Anna Cole. Enjoy your day. <laughs>